students lastly who are discussing uh, about the evolution and who are discussing about the modern uh, synthetic theory after that comes uh, the hardy weinberg law the hardy weinberg law you can search on my, uh, this uh, youtube channel that's already available now we should move on towards the evidences in favor of evolution uh, there are evidences from various branches of the biology in favor of the evolution and uh, first of all uh, we shall see the morphoanatomical evidences so morphoanatomical evidence are all those evidences which are supplied from morphology and anatomy in favor of the uh, evolution so the evidences which come from the morphology they are known as morphological evidence in favor of evolution and the evidence which come from this anatomical branch or the anatomy are known as the uh, anatomical evidences in favor of evolution when we togetherly uh, study the morphoanatomical evidences we say that they are morphoanatomical evidences in favor of the evolution so simply the morphoanatomical evidence are evidences from the field of morphology and anatomy which favor the concept of evolution now the morphoanatomical evidences are broadly divided into three <laughs> uh, headings the first heading is the uh, homologous organs homology and which includes the divergent evolution also now first of all uh, we will understand what are homologous organs uh, i may tell you that organs which have the same basic plan and organization those organs which have same basic plan and organization but uh, quite different functions are known as homologous organs now we can understand this uh, by these diagrams i have drawn over here three diagrams uh, this diagram is of the human arm and this diagram is that of the wing of a bird and this diagram is the forelimb of the horse now in these all these diagrams we have driven the bones present in these organs which have over here uh, labeled uh, which have over here also been labeled so this is human arm you try to understand this is the uh, upper part of the human arm and this bone present in it is known as it's known as the humerus as has been written over here then there are uh, in the forearm there are two bones this is the radius and this very bone this is the ulna then in the wrist there are bones known as corpals uh, then <clears throat> in the palm there are bones known as metacorpals and then uh, in the digits there are bones which we call as the phalanges so this is the organizational plan of the bones which are present in our in human arm now we shall move on towards the bird wing in the bird wing you will see the same bones are present although their structure is a bit different but the bones are same there is humerus there is radius there is ulna there are, there are corpals there, there are metacorpals there are phalanges although a little bit difference uh, is in the size but the bones are same after that you, you will move towards the horse forelimbs in the horse forelimb, uh, forelimbs also the bones are the same this is humerus this is radius this is ulna then corpals uh, then uh, these uh, metacorpals then phalanges with a with a bit of difference but the bones are same so we say that these organs which have the same basic pattern same basic organization same basic plan but have quite different functions they are known as the homologous organs so the bird wing the arm of the human beings and the forelimb of the horse uh, it's an example of the homologous organs so organs which have the same basic pattern which have the same basic organization uh, are known as the homologous organs but very important thing over here uh, which needs to be understood is that if this organ this organ and this organ belong to three different animals they have quite different sorry they have uh, quite same uh, structure same organization rather but their functions are different you see the function of human arm is quite different from that of the bird wing and the function of the horse limb is quite different from that of the bird wing and that of the human arm so having the same structure same organization same basic architectural plan but quite different functions uh, is the characteristic of the homologous organs so those organs which have the same organization same architectural plan but quite different functions are known as the homologous organs so this is the first uh, what we call as the uh, <coughs> evidence from morphology and anatomy in fear of the evolution and this process this process of presence of uh, these homologous organs in differently related uh, these uh, animals or different related organisms is known as homology now we shall uh, we will uh, discuss a little bit about the how they have evolved how the homologous organs have evolved now you see 
basically they have the same basic architectural plan it means they have emerged from the same basic ancestor or we can say that in the uh, in the ancient past all these organisms had a, a same, had, had the same ancestor or they had emerged from the same ancestral stock but they have underwent evolution by going into different uh, these environments and their organs have evolved differently that's why these organs have the same basic architectural architecture plan but quite different functions so this phenomena in which the uh, different groups of animals have evolved from the same basic uh, what we call as the uh, ancestor but have underwent evolution by going into different environments and their organs having the same basic architectural plan uh, but quite different functions due to their adaptation into quite different environments and this phenomena is known as divergent evolution so the divergent evolution is having its basis from the homologous organs uh, so this this all was about the homologous and homologous organs and about the divergent evolution now next is the analogous organs quite contrary to the this homologous organs are the analogous organs now what basically are analogous organs i may tell you that these are those organs which have the same uh, these function but quite different uh, organization and basic architectural plan and structure uh, like you'll see this over here is the bird wing in the bird wing i have already discussed the bones which are present in the bird wing but this wing is of the insect it's quite different this is a chitinous flap like structure the insect wing is a chitinous structure uh, rather it's an extension of the patagium uh, it's very soft uh, and uh, it's not very hard it's very soft very uh, fragile but on the country you will see in the bird wings uh, there are present bones which we have already discussed in case of the homologous organs so they have quite different organizational uh, pattern they have quite different architectural plan uh, quite different design but the function is same so we see those organs which have quite different structure but have the same function are known as analogs organs so these organs have same function but have quite different organization now uh, this phenomena extends of analogs organs between a uh, distantly related uh, animals or plants is known as analogy now uh, we will go uh, a little bit into the uh, origin of the analogs organs how the analogs organs have evolved uh, actually the analogs organs have the same function but the uh, so their structure is quite different it means that they had in the ancient past they have evolved from quite different ancestral stocks it means they had not the same ancestor as we saw in case of the homologous organs but in case of analogous organs the animals possessing the analogous organs they had quite different ancestors in the ancient past but all these animals have evolved in the same environment that's why their organs have evolved similarly for example the bird wing as well as the insect wing both have the functions of uh, what we call as uh, they help the animals in flying they help the animals in taking a flight it is due to the same environment which has been exhibited by the birds as well as the insects that's why they have evolved uh, their uh, structures which have the same function otherwise they are quite different in case of their architectural plan design and structure and this is what are the uh, these what we call as analog organs lastly there are vestigial organs a very simple concept organs which don't have function in the body are known as the vestigial organs so why they are present in our body uh, basically they might have been functional in case of the ancestors but they are not presently functional and they are known as vestigial organs simple examples are in case of humans the appendix <laughs> appendix then the wisdom teeth they don't have function in case of humans similarly nictating membrane of the eye it's also functionless in case of the humans and then the auricular muscles of the pinna which are which help in moving of the pinna actually we can't we as humans we can't move our pinna or the external ear rather other animals they can move it so in those animals these muscles are functional but in our case in case of humans they are totally non-functional and they are vestigial similarly body hairs are also vestigial and the mammary glands in case of human males not in case of females in case of human males the mammary glands are also used as also functional so needs to say that vestigial organs are those organs which don't have any function but it is there is possibility that they might have been functional in the ancestors hope that you have understood this content in the next lecture we shall be discussing some other evidences of evolution